hope you'll call someone right now. Tell them to tune in. This is going to be a night where the Word of God is going to be extremely valuable for you. Usually, I take the first portion of this program to bring you news articles that I believe are relevant to the imminent return of Jesus Christ. And if you've been with us on Prophecy Files before, you've heard me say that the purpose of this program is to keep believers aware and alert, not just with information, but with preparation for the next great event on the calendar of God, the rapture of the church. That's what we're getting ready for. And the hope of this program is to bring those who are not ready, those who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, to the saving knowledge of the good news that Jesus came to save, to heal, and to deliver the lost, the broken, and the captive from their sin. To be able to help people understand how important that it is that Jesus Christ is truly about to return, and they must be ready. Now, we never know what news may happen from day to day. Some days I can bring you the report of the news of the kingdom of God advancing around the world and the encouragement that comes from seeing people come to Christ around the world, and that's happening in massive numbers, there's no doubt. But most of the time, the news and the information, the articles that I bring to you is quite shocking and alarming as day by day, we see our world and our nation turning away from God, largely ignoring uh, most of the information that is coming that could change their life in a moment. And some, even Christians, casting their uh, thoughts aside about the return of Jesus Christ and preoccupied with the cares of life. Each week, uh, the news that you hear on television and the internet and so forth uh, is increasing the signs that are more obvious of the economic crisis that looms, the wars and rumors of wars, uh, all of the things that are happening that Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24, changes that are happening in our nation and in our world that many people are ignoring the clear warnings and the Word of God. And some people may already be getting weary of hearing of the signs of the times, the economic implosions, evil turning to good and good to evil, and are saying, don't tell me anymore. I, I don't want to hear any more about that. I'm afraid. But my friend, that will not stop the reality of the events that are unfolding day by day that are going to affect your life. But I believe God is concerned with how we as his people will respond in these times and to the things that are coming upon our nation and in our world. Now, God knows that our lifestyle is going to be changed in a moment and in a way that we could never imagine. God wants us to be prepared. The overwhelming majority of Americans are consumed with the things of this world, and God is not even in their thoughts. It was predicted that way, that it would be like that in the days of Noah in the end times, and here we are now. I believe God never hides any important matter from his children. The book of Amos 3.7 says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. As God is warning us about a coming storm, we can be sure he will not leave us or forsake us as uh, to leave us in a constant state of fear and dread. That's not the way our Heavenly Father treats his children. The Word of God proves to us over and over again that God is ready and he's willing to take care of his children no matter what the circumstances and no matter what the conditions of this world. The problem is we become so attached to the things of this world so much that we want secular solutions instead of spiritual solutions to the problems. Now listen to what the Word of God has to say. When God was telling Israel and Judah that there was going to become uh, there was going to come a shaking on the earth and that they were going to go into Assyrian and Babylonian captivity. They didn't want to believe that. And you can know that when God said there's going to be a shaking of this earth, it will come to pass. Listen to what Isaiah 2 says in verse 19. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Verse 20. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and idols of gold, which they had made one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats. What's the word of God saying right there? He's saying that when God begins to shake this earth, 
that the people in the earth are going to suddenly realize that their idols of silver and gold and the things that they've held on to are going to become worthless and they'll throw them to the side. They'll be uh, worthless to them to try to escape the shaking that is taking place. Now, this is so important because, again, when God tells us that he's going to shake the earth, then he will do exactly what he said. As I bring you this program tonight, many of you can see and hear and know something is about to break. Something is about to happen. God is going to shake things. This is what it says in Hebrews 12, verse number 27. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. I find God saying to believers, to us today, while things are going to shake all around you, hear the word of the Lord in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1 and 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together, that's the rapture, unto him. And here's the admonition in verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. As we can see and hear of more and more, the Christians must learn where our help comes from and not trust in any other than Jesus Christ. David gives us a portrait of a prosperous believer for the last days. And here's what he says in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, in the word of God. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. The word of God will constantly be on your mind. And he, now note this, this is for the blessed believer. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, on the opposite side of that, verse 5, he says this, verse 4, The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now this is about where we get our advice from, where we are influenced from. This scripture is all about who we're listening to, who we're associating with. This is the key, ladies and gentlemen, to having a sound mind in the days that are ahead. This is important for the believer. Blessed is the believer who refuses to make decisions or invest or be influenced by the counsel of the ungodly experts who do not believe in God's word. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to prosper in the times we're in, and God said it will happen and can happen for those that are trusting in the Lord, you can understand that when you trust in God, according to Psalm 1, he will never fail you. God will not allow his people to trust in anything other than him. No counsel or confidence can be placed in the ungodly ways of this world because God said he considers that wicked, according to Psalm 1 and multiple other scriptures. The source of our strength in these days and in the days ahead is the hope that we have in Christ in these perilous times to abide in him. The Bible says that we would be illustrated in Psalm 1 like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That is God's supply to the blessed and prosperous believer. In spite of all of the ungodliness and wickedness that's going on, God delights to show how he can bless his people and keep his hand upon those that are committed to him in the middle of all the shaking that is going on now and in the future. The Apostle Paul said, in the face of adversities and trials up ahead, when he was seeing and hearing all the things that were going on, this is what he said in Acts 20, verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, 
so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. In the following verses after that in Acts 20, Paul said, I'm not moved by the potential hardships or of the wealth of the world or its possessions. I've not coveted man's silver or the gold or his apparel. I've labored in what I need to do. I'm preaching the gospel and everything about what I'm doing is to help others because he concludes it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, my friends, the ministry of the watchman in the Bible was to see what was coming and warn the people, that's what I'm doing tonight, and to sound the alarm for their preparation. The watchman was to supply the people with any and all the information necessary for them to get ready. And then it's up to the people to respond to the warning and prepare accordingly. If you're looking and listening to the news of this world, you will uh, want to throw your hands up sometimes and say, like many people are, uh, what's the use? But God has not left us as Christians, as believers, without hope and comfort in these days. And I want to give you a key to your peace of mind, soul, and spirit for these last days. God says that the abiding presence of God through the power of the Holy Spirit is the answer for the believers in these last days. The promise of the Father is in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he would come to be able to bring us strength and comfort in this time. The promise of the Father is you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Jesus said, I will send you, John 16, a comforter that will come and especially come alongside you in these days to help you to understand the value of the presence of God that will keep your heart, soul, mind, and strength in your life and in your mind. It requires a daily communion with the Lord because God's people get powerless when we stay away from the presence of God. And we're just like Jonah who couldn't face the demand of the presence of God made on him because many times when we are avoiding the presence of God, it's because we know a change must take place inside of our life. It was not the sins of the Ninevites that caused Jonah to be scared. It was the sin in his own heart that he couldn't face. And he had a controversy between him and God, so he would rather stay away from the presence of God. Now, there's two things that's important for you that God's wanting me to give to you tonight. It is that God's presence, uh, in, in God's presence, sin is exposed in our life. And that's a good thing. Conviction is a good thing of the Holy Spirit condemnation comes from the devil, and that's a bad thing. The second part, which is probably the most valued in our life in the time that we're living for the believer, is to commune and abide in God's presence because it's there that we find strength and comfort and the transformation of God's power comes into our life. Let me make it clear. I believe we are about to see and experience the reason why we will need the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives personally. Because of the descriptive name of the Holy Spirit, I think is really key. Jesus called him the comforter. Think about it. Jesus is speaking in John 14 to his disciples and he was talking about his departure and, he, and the condition of the world that they were in. And he says this in John 14, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, think about it. In the time we're in right now with all the lies that are going on, the spirit of truth is abiding with you and in you. And the world, he says in verse 17, cannot receive that spirit of truth because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, believer, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, Jesus said. I will come to you. Now, how does he do that? He comes through the power of the Holy Spirit into the life of the believer. In John 15, verse 26, but when the comforter has come, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, Jesus, he says. And ye shall also bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Jesus was speaking to his disciples. Now the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, makes you aware that he is watching over every move to help you 
to deter you from evil and to reveal Christ and the daily presence of God that is abiding with you. What a powerful thing. Because the comforter in the coming storm will remind us, John 14 says, of the things we need to know. John 14, but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. What is he reminding us of? What is the Holy Spirit's job in this world? He's preparing a bride for the coming of the groom, Jesus Christ. And what does he remind us of? He reminds us that God loves us. He reminds us of God's promises. He reminds us of God's provision and God's peace inside of our life. And listen to the word of God in Colossians 3, verse 15. And let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Consider Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. The Holy Spirit will not only remind us, but he will reprove us. And we need that. It's the sanctifying process, the separating from the things of the world and separating unto God. John 16, listen to the word of God in verse 8. And when he has come, the Holy Spirit, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Now he explains in verse 9, of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Now let me break it down for you just a moment. He says of sin, he will reprove us of sin. That is, he will, the Holy Spirit will convict us, expose sin in our life and convince us what is right and what is wrong. He says he will reprove us in righteousness that is, he will reveal God's greatness in our life in the picture and in the standing of Jesus Christ's righteousness in our life, not ours. The fact that we don't have Jesus walking on this earth in the person of Jesus Christ right now requires that the Holy Spirit reveals through the Word of God, through the teaching and the preaching of God's Word, who Jesus is and what his character is, what his righteousness is. And he will reprove us of judgment, that is to say, to, to remind us and reprove us in the fact that the prince of this world will be judged and everyone is going to have an encounter with God. All the ungodly influences that cause you to sin, God says the Holy Spirit will help you to be able to know what truth is. He will guide us into all truth. So he's going to remind us and he's going to reprove us and the Holy Spirit is going to renew us daily. Now this is important. This is what the Holy Spirit wants me to get to you tonight. The abiding presence of God, the daily awareness of the presence of Jesus Christ coming alongside you is going to be so critical for the days ahead. You must crave the presence of God. And I'm not just talking about going to church. While that is a valued thing, in Hebrews 10, the Bible reminds us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. But you must have such an abiding presence of God that there's not one moment that you're not aware of his presence with you and in you. John 14 says this, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, Jesus says, and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. You should know him, because he's dwelling with you and shall be in you. And Jesus gives us the greatest promise of all. I won't leave you comfortless. I will come to you. For me, that's the greatest promise that can be given. Jesus said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. I will be a daily comforter for you through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you can cast all of your cares upon me, all of your anxieties, all of your infirmities. That's what Romans 8, 26, 27, and 28 says, that he will help us 
in our weaknesses, our infirmities. The Holy Spirit's been sent to come alongside. The secret to the strength in these perilous times is to stir the gift of God that is within you. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting of my hands. Now listen, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. That comes through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit daily. We should be filled with the fullness of God every day. Daily communion in our prayer life, in our study of the Word of God, in our fellowship with other believers. Listen to what Ephesians says. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 says this, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, the measure of the amount of God's presence that you allow into your life is the measure of the comfort and the strength that can come into your life. The comforter, as he is called, will not, uh, cannot be offended. We can't offend the Holy Spirit or, or, or drive him away. We must commune in prayer and welcome the presence of God into our life in order to keep our minds and hearts in Christ Jesus. The Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ's Spirit dwelling in you is needed now more than ever before. He will keep you in all of your ways. Trusting God happens because I've learned to abide in His presence. I've learned to abide in prayer and in in not just getting together in prayer meetings or praying at church, but daily, it's praying without ceasing. Uh, that's communing with the Holy Spirit fellowship with other godly individuals. You're going to have to be careful the relationships you have in the days ahead and what comes into your spirit through social media. You need to let the preeminence of the Word of God abide with you, and the Holy Spirit will reveal the Word of God in truth and in understanding and help you to see the things that are coming ahead. Craving the presence of God is a critical thing today, my friends. When I say crave, that is a desire in your heart to be able to fellowship with Jesus Christ. I know you have that as a believer. But some of you today are sensing, even you believers that are watching, Christians that should be without fear and, and should not be filled with dread and worry. God said, I don't want you to worry. In fact, worry is a sin. In fact, the Bible says in Revelation that the fearful will be thrown into the pit of hell. That's the reason why we can't be afraid. We must have the mind of Christ to be steady in the days that are ahead. Because the truth is, Jesus Christ is about to return, and he's going to come for those who have been in such fellowship that their ear is tuned to the trumpet of God. Are you ready? Some of you tonight that are watching are not ready to meet Jesus Christ. Maybe you've backslidden on God, drifted away from the presence of God. I want to tell you, you need to get close to the house, close to God's house, close to the communion of his presence and say, Lord, forgive me a sinner. Come into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood. I want to be ready when you come again. And for those of you that are drifting, you Christians, believers that are drifting away, you're, you've let the Holy Spirit just uh, move away and you've not communed with him, it's time for you to get back where you belong. Jesus is about to return. I'd love to hear from you. For those of you that have just given your life to Jesus, you're sensing the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. I want to hear from you. Email me. Call the number that's on the screen. If you need a Bible, if you need some information, we can send back to you to help you in your walk with the Lord. We'd be glad to do that. And for every believer, every Christian, stay rooted and grounded in Christ and in the presence of God, and he will keep you until the day of the Lord. Thanks for joining us for Prophecy Files. I'll look forward to being back with you again. And until the next time, remember, Jesus Christ is coming soon.